back in 2012, the BBC realised that um, there was a massive shortfall in IT professionals in the UK. So that was the beginning of the uh, Microbit project back in 2012, where what the BBC did was they set out to come up with some some way that they could help the education system uh, to, um, to, to to generate these new IT professionals. And after lots and lots of research, looking at existing technology, looking at Scratch, looking at Raspberry Pi, um, what they realised is that there was nothing out there that appealed to children who had no prior experience with IT. So the BBC set about producing uh, a format uh, that would encourage and bring these sorts of children into, into IT. Um, and after, after a lot of research, what they came up with is uh, this little device here called the BBC Microbit. Um, superb little device, it's a microcomputer. Let me show you this one here. Uh, so it has two buttons. It has a fantastic little design, uh, 25 LEDs, so it has been referred to as the as ultra low definition uh, video. <laughs> yeah. Um, also on the back, and again, this is because it's aimed at, at children as a learning tool. All the components are listed, which is very nice. Um, it has an accelerometer, it has a magnetometer, uh, there are heat sensors in there. Um, also very nice, it has a Bluetooth antenna or radio antenna that's, that, that works with Bluetooth. Um, and of course it has the pins at the bottom. So it's a standalone computer, it does all sorts of nice things just by itself. But because it has the, um, the antenna, uh, sorry, the, um, the, the edge connector, it means that you can connect it up to a vast range of accessories, peripherals, kit, uh, experiments. I, I have a few with me here. I have all sorts of uh, lights and sound generating equipment. I have a robot. There's a motion detector, thermometer. You actually have a strawberry. And I have a, a half-eaten strawberry, which is not part of the uh, demo, but I have seen people powering a microbit off of a banana. <laughs> I don't think a strawberry would work. I'm not sure. Um, but of course, by itself, the microbit is a standalone device. You don't need any of these uh, additional things. But there's a very rich ecosystem that has built up around um, microbit. So whilst we're, we're obviously targeting and trying to appeal to young children who have no prior experience with, with, um, with IT, what we are finding, which is fantastic, is that the maker community and the geeks really love uh, our hardware. Um, and so it, it has a, a very broad appeal. It, it's been described by some as having a very, very low floor and a very, very high ceiling. So, um, in 2016, it was the culmination of this, this uh, initiative by the BBC, one million of these devices were produced and given away to UK school children, aged 11 and 12, um, at the beginning of their high school journey. And um, that, of course, has created a, a fantastic user base. But it, it wasn't enough just to produce a nice piece of hardware. By itself, yes, it's a great, it's a great piece of kit. But what makes it a success in the UK and what will make it a success as we roll out around the world is the ecosystem that we've built and that we maintain around the microbit. Now the ecosystem involves things like the editors. So we have a really fantastic um, block editor uh, created by Microsoft, one of our partners. Um, it's called MakeCode, it used to be PXT, it's now called MakeCode. It's a block-based JavaScript editor where using the same sort of interface that children are used to, uh, having used Scratch, you can create programs for the microbit. And the Microbit Foundation, which is, as I said, a not-for-profit. Um, and that's who you're with? That's who I work for now. I, I was with the BBC uh, on the project, and um, when the BBC completed the project, I, um, I didn't feel that I was finished with Microbit. It, 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 it had uh, captured my heart. And um, as, as with anyone who works with Microbit, you do tend to get a bit passionate about it. So I, um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to, to land a, a job at the Microbit Foundation. I can't it? help but notice your name tag seems to be... It's my name tag. Oh, my... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's, um, it's so easy to make wearables. Now I have a little, um, a little uh, micro-lit uh, NeoPixel uh, add-on at the bottom, just to give it a bit more, a bit more colour. And how are the... Where's the battery come from on that? Oh, well, I've got, I've got a battery pack hidden away oh, here, so I'm cheating that. a bit. Um, but uh, <laughs> It lights up your name tag. Lights up my name tag. And um, I did have, uh, but I, I've, I've lost the program now, but I did have a, a radio thing where I was able to um, push a button 
oh it's still working how about that and the, the light turned red which was just a nice little touch sweet so as i was walking around i had this hidden in my back pocket and uh, <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, well, can you show us like three things that are just amazingly cool? Absolutely. I have a, um, I have a little uh, Neo Pixel display here. Now I use this at home, and I have a, um, a model house that I've built with my children that I use at shows, and uh, this is meant to be the fireplace. So, oh, uh, <laughs> me. It, 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 uh, this is this is on cool now. Um, now my remote control that I'm using here is not set up to go through all the cycles um, but it does have various heat levels uh, at the moment it just does on and off so that's my fireplace um, and that's quite fun um, and obviously this thing's been going red the whole time because whenever a radio signal is detected it will uh, it will show red hmm. um, so if you like this is uh, this is almost a, a spy machine and it will show when it's flashing red the uh, the radio signal that has been transmitted so in theory you could spy on um, on other people um, but realistically robots that that is where they start to get to get really cool um, so this robot here uh, by itself it's it's just a, a chunk a hunk of metal but when we put a micro bit into it it's flashed with the correct code I up this program that i wrote earlier uh, i call it my remote control car and this is the program that goes onto the car so i have one micro bit in the in the car and another one that i use as my remote control i'm actually flashing it at the moment so i'm writing the code is being transferred onto the micro bit the little light there indicates that it's flashing it's now finished so this is the code for my robot i'll just need to uh, put that in there all right now i need to uh, put the remote control code onto a micro bit i'll i'll use this one so i just need to load the oh i had it open already this is the uh, for that so let's flash that on again light flashing this micro bit has actually got a nice little uh, case with a battery on the inside which is um it's a really fantastic makes it i mean it's portable with the with the battery pack and of course that just makes it even even more portable yeah now i think my battery is running a bit low uh so just for now i will use that battery okay now i need to put this on the floor Right, so hopefully this will work. I'm going to use the accelerometer as a way of making you forwards and backwards. And my wow. is appalling. And this has all been controlled by the remote controls in my hand. Uh, so there we go. So the the thing is, we have to get this to more children, not just in the UK. Well, that's interesting you mention that because um, you know, obviously uh, we are already in 32 countries around the world. And you're here in Bologna, which is where there are many, are many other countries. Yep. And I've made some very good contacts here. Great deal of interest in Italy. What would you like to say to the educators and, and uh, political leaders in the United States? Well, a couple of things. Um, firstly, watch this space. Uh, we, are, we have some really big plans for the US. It's a very important market for us. Um, there are already uh, pre-orders being taken by um, Adafruit and I believe SparkFun as well. Um, we have a fantastic range of organizations lined up already producing materials in the US. Um, and look out for us at ITSI in June in Texas. Um, and before then, you'll be hearing a lot more about Microbit in the US. Ah, so is it fair to say it's a British invasion? Um, well, we like to think of ourselves as multinational um, <laughs> and global uh, but but yeah I mean the roots are in the UK and of course the US are, are our, our spiritual cousins so we don't think of it as an invasion more as popping over to see the relatives maybe like the uh, the stem beetles yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the moment you can buy them from resellers and there's loads on our website and the RRP is between 14 and 15 pound now that for that you get um, you get your box uh, you go box inside you get uh, well a quick start guide safety documentation obviously um, you get your micro bed and also you get a USB cable 
a battery pack so that it's portable and you get the batteries. And what's really important about this is that straight out the box, you don't need anything else. You don't need drivers, it's plug and play. Uh, a, a standard PC or a laptop will recognize it as a USB pen drive. And as long as you have a, a laptop ideally connected, although the editors do work offline, you can then write your code and flash it onto your microbit very, very quickly and very easily. But, but you're asked about cost. So if you're an individual and you're buying one, yeah, you'll pay between 14 and 15 pounds. And you know, this is my personal opinion, but I, I just believe that can only be good for people like Arduino and Pi, who obviously offer perhaps a more sophisticated um, experience, but one that's not so accessible to, to beginners. And we'll be definitely be watching this from the United States. Great, great. Well, we're going to be big there pretty soon, with, with your help, of course. Thank you for sharing this. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You're actually a geek. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to confess I am. Um...